Welcome to Off Screen. This week we're reading Man Alive by Joseph J. Greenberg. A man's world is thrown into disarray when an alien virus takes over the planet and he becomes the only being the virus cannot infiltrate. Joseph J. Greenberg. Um, so this looks like it's maybe his first major sale. Yeah. Um, but he teaches filmmaking at Rowan University. He graduated from there. Uh, okay. Like with the MFA. Um, which is in New Jersey. It's in New Jersey, which is also where he's from. And where the script is set. Exactly. Um, and this script has Noah Holly attached to direct, and he's the... I think he's one of the EPs and creators of uh, the TV show Fargo. Okay. Yeah. Has this guy done any, this director, has he done film before, or has he just done Fargo? I think he's just done Fargo. Um, he has written a number of books, as you can see. Oh. Here. He graduated from Sarah Lawrence College, along with my neighbor. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, my neighbor, like, growing up, she went to Sarah Lawrence. I think that's hardly relevant. <laughs> I demand that you don't cut it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. Or he's worked on other stuff. He worked on Bones for a long time. Oh, yeah. The Unusuals. Okay. Yeah. That's enough for me. We're not here to talk about directors. No, we're here to talk about Joseph J. Greenberg. Well, we're going to talk about his script at least, but I don't think we really know that much else about him. Um, he used to work for NFL Films. What? Or maybe he still does. What does that even mean? Like he's the, the sen- he's the senior media specialist for the NFL. NFL films. Yeah. Well, what is that? I don't know. Like compiling, overseeing digital workflow throughout the facility. Responsibilities include organizing. Steven is reading his LinkedIn right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Whatever. You know they got a lot of films. They got a lot of football footage. That's not it's the not, same. It's not written material, but. Okay. I didn't say it was. No, I know, but I'm just saying. I said he's a senior media specialist. He's cool. He's an adjunct professor professor at Rowan University. He lives in New Jersey. I mean, I don't want to be harsh, but... Wow. I feel it's like... It's already harsh. But it's already I feel harsh. like if you're su- going to be serious... If you're going to be serious about screenwriting, you probably should be in LA there you go. unless there unless you go, you're perpetuating stereotypes unless you're going to unless you're going to make the films yourself and just go completely indie then I feel like you ought to probably come to LA but okay hey maybe he flies back and forth sure maybe he does yeah all right is that enough that's enough i'm going to so this is kind of like a alien invasion thriller type thing apocalyptic yeah Sort of a zombie movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Synopsis time. It's been three years since the human race fell victim to an alien virus, which brought them all under the control of a single collective consciousness, all except for one unnamed man, our hero. Forced to coexist with the alien entity, which he's named Barry, the man subsists mostly on liquor, staving off insanity by occasionally massacring the zombies which surround him. Barry can also inhabit any one of these people to do his bidding. He's tried using doctors and nurses to run all sorts of tests on the man to determine what makes him immune to the virus, but to no avail. Despite their mutual distrust, Barry and the man are forced to strike a deal when a new strain of zombie emerges, resistant to the virus and actively fighting back against human and alien alike. The agreement, if man helps him to kill these new zombies, Barry will let him meet a girl named Maya. That's right, he's not the only normal human being left, after all. In fact, she lives nearby, and it's at her farmhouse that man makes his last stand against the zombies. They're actually being led by another survivor named Daniel, a self-proclaimed messiah for the human race, but clearly just insane. Man kills Daniel, and, due to the mental link he shared with all of his minions, they die with him. Man is left to settle down with Maya drawn close due to the circumstances the two have quickly fallen in love, and they seem to have come to terms with their alien counterparts. After all, it wasn't the aliens, but their own fellow human who proved to be the most dangerous enemy. 
I felt like that was the kind of cliche thing they were going for. Is like, really, the true enemy was ourselves, you know? Yeah, that is that what they were going for. Yeah. Which is, yeah, the alien comes and makes everything more efficient and, like, eradicated war and yeah. so poverty people, and hunger and all these bad things. People still go about their routine. Like, they still go to work and stuff, but they just don't really have any emotions. And, like, on the freeway, every everyone in their car is just in a perfect line. They're They're basically, like robots i guess they're like zombie robots so while they staved off while they ended war they've really at what cost damn straight daniel yeah also a character named daniel right who's also named or he's named daniel and he's also 27 which is my age he's uh you're much like him don't don't say that because i thought daniel ruined this whole script okay i did not like daniel tell me your feelings on daniel well, it got stupid as soon as they introduced him. I don't understand how any of it worked. Like, I felt like they just needed to generate a, a new bad guy because also baffling to me, man, the main guy just kind of reconciles with these aliens. And like in the end, he's he's seems like he's just down with it. Like he doesn't mind the fact that just him and this one other lady are the only normal right. people left. He's like somehow OK with that. But this Daniel guy, they, they create his, him to be the bad guy, and I don't agree with that. He's, yes, he's a bad guy, but he should not be the bad guy here. The aliens are still the ones who stole, like, everyone else he loved in his life, and his wife, he had a wife, the main character, who got taken over, so she became a zombie. Like, these aliens took everything from him. Why is he okay with that? I don't know. And then, okay, Daniel, apparently he can, like create these these new kind of zombies i was talking about they call them purple people because they they turn purple for some reason but basically they're still zombies they're just like hostile rather than going about their their routine or whatever they actually will attack you but they never explain really how daniel creates these purple people right Mm -mm. answer me one more question and i'll stop ranting but the whole way we find out about daniel Mm mm-hmm is but because man the main guy has a dream he has this dream where he sees some zombies writing on the wall in blood and it says ask about daniel so i think uh so what was that how did that happen i think daniel can infiltrate dreams as well that's not fair that's ridiculous because daniel implanted that dream and what what man was dreaming about was actually was actually seeing daniel kill other living normal humans. right i got that they're like 27 or what or so you kind of in the united states like throughout the start of the script you think that man is just having these these dreams of like violent outbursts and you think he's just kind of losing it and going yeah. crazy but really we, we learned that those were all visions of what daniel was actually doing killing people yeah though man himself was just going around killing people he, too. yes he was he and was it doesn't really of... matter because everyone has everyone it's just a bunch of empty bodies right. empty vessels occupied by the alien consciousness right so the aliens don't care would you do that if everyone was a zombie or like you know they're not like attacking you but no. you know you know that like they're there not really seem to be people. any point to it and you're just like like he, he killed get a rush. he killed his wife right in a car accident in the beginning right so now he just, like, precluded himself from, like, say, a cure's found. Like, now his wife's fucked. That's a good she's, point. She's, like, well, but, legit dead. But they're not looking for a cure. I mean, the aliens... No, he's just, uh, he's just about drinking whiskey all day. Which, yeah, he's sure. he's not going to find any cure, and the, definitely the aliens aren't. The they're aliens the ones who want to take no over. Have incentive to, yeah. But what if, like, you know... But that being said, the biggest... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, at least somebody you really hate, you could find them and kill them. Oh, sure, yeah. I guess maybe you get some satisfaction out of that. Might be kind of fun. Yeah, especially if you've been there for three years all by yourself. Yeah. Um, do you think there is some sort of metaphor being drawn to, like, the Iraq war or, like, the evasion of Iraq or terrorism, <laughs> that sort of thing? It's I think pretty, you're it's, reaching. It's pretty muddled, but there's a lot here. Like, there's he's a soldier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Daniel clearly, like, fancies himself as kind of a resistance fighter yeah who comes across um i i think the only reason for they use the word suicide bombers they use the word conscripted yes but that i that felt very 
surface level to me. I thought the pretty much the only reason that man was a uh, uh, war veteran was just to justify him being good at fighting later on. Yes. And he somehow had access to like a ridiculous amount of weaponry. Well, he Well, you know, that I guess I can give it that cuz they do kind of set that up where buried alien will pretty much get him whatever he needs. Yeah, exactly. As long as he's not making trouble for him, you know. He he gets whatever kind of car he wants and the aliens will just, you know, He'll take over whatever people necessary to bring him that. Well, Barry's in everyone at all times. Right, so Barry, Barry. Yeah, they all like talk in unison. It's, yeah, it's very. So if you're creepy. with two people that have been infiltrated by the aliens, they're both going to be talking to you, right. saying the same things, at the same time. And then, like when weird. when he puts man in touch with Maya, he's kind of just like using two people. One. One of them is with man, and one of them is with Maya, and he just talks through them at the same time, so they can sort of relay the message. They're like both ends of a telephone. Yeah, basically. Kind of. That was that was interesting. I guess there there were some things. I feel like I kind of showed my cards very early on here about this, but there were some it things seems like that you I really liked it. <laughs> there were things I did like. Sure. Though. Um, like there was some fun to be had with that weird interaction between him and Maya because it was inherently an awkward situation trying to like flirt with somebody basically through this like alien surrogate and at first it was actually his brother's body that Barry was yeah. using which was really weird also he was like kind of I, he, estranged from his brother I guess but Barry found it his body and like brought him to meet man at one point to try and cheer him up Mm -hmm. but then he starts talking to this girl through his brother and it's like how do you yeah it's creepy he's Hard flirting to be flirtatious flirting when you're talking to your brother yeah right? yeah he's flirting with a girl while talking to his brother um so then he like goes and he swaps out his brother's body for this hot girl that he knew in high school he just like looks her up and takes her from her house basically which i thought was actually pretty funny and i was totally on board for that that sure. was that was more of like the goofy side but then it yeah i just got like a lot more heavy and like, or trying to be kind of heavy and, and ponderous later, which did not work for me. Yeah. Kind of the reveal, the reveals of the world were kind of cool. Like yeah. When he first goes outside and he talks, starts talking to his neighbor and he, he it seems just like a normal suburban neighborhood. He goes to work, but he's carrying like a hatchet yeah. and then he goes and just kills a bunch of people. Well, first he goes to... Yeah, he addresses his neighbor as Barry. Then he goes to work and has a different conversation with his boss. Right. And then he calls his boss Barry. And then that's, like, the first time... You, like, that, like, kind of raised my suspicions about, like, what right. was going on. Because I had already forgotten the logline. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was cool and kind of subtle. It yeah. It would play really well on screen. Yeah. Um, they They also had sort of a nice backstory with his wife before the whole alien invasion, like their relationship read really genuine to me. And yeah. I really, I really liked the dialogue between them, which is a shame. It's like, you got this writer who is really good at writing dialogue and, and especially in this relationship with the husband and wife. And then he writes a script where there are no humans left. So it's like, <laughs> what do you do with that? That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, I like well, the, some, a lot of the Maya stuff with Maya was pretty good. Yeah, that was, that was okay. But I, yeah, I like the stuff with his wife. They have some flashbacks towards the beginning, and you see what their life was like before the alien invasion. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's cool. She's like an artist. She was studying for like her master's in I don't know what something art related. Um, but they have like a, an argument, not even an argument. He's very understanding, but she's saying how she hasn't been able to like clean up around the house at all because she's been working on her thesis or whatever, and. I don't know, maybe I was reading into it too much, but I thought that was informing how he lived his life after the invasion because he kept the house really messy. Like, they made it clear that Barry would, you know, just inhabit people to do whatever he wants for him. He could easily have the house cleaned if he wanted, but right. I felt like he purposely left it dirty because that was how it was when his wife was there. And I kind of liked that. I yeah. That was nice. Yeah, definitely. Well, no, because there's a later, or there's a flashback later on where. He comes home and he finds that everything is cleaned and that there's right. groceries. And that's the first time when... She's actually been taken over. She's actually been taken over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, oh, I didn't mention this either, but so the zombies that Daniel creates, like the purple people, mm -hmm. they're like crying constantly. Well, they're in like excruciating pain, right? Is that why? I don't know. I thought, yeah. I just thought it was like a weird, I don't know, like an emotional response to what was happening to them or something. I didn't think it was just pain, but oh, maybe. it seems like it would be so awkward to watch. Like, just imagine a regular zombie movie, but all the zombies are crying the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Like, how annoying would that get? Yeah. I wrote on page 77 a note that says this is exactly how not to write a scene. Okay, what what scene? This is when he meets Maya in person for the first time, uh -huh. and she, I guess, used to be a dancer, Right. so she's trying to teach him how to dance, and they're doing it at first, and it's going okay, and then it just says, just as man starts to loosen up, he begins to experience flashes. He sees imagery of his wife, Tom, the violence he's committed, even Daniel. The flashes build in intensity, increasing his anxiety until finally he can't take it any longer. That's telling, all that is just telling me. It's like, your job to show me what he sees. It just says he sees imagery of his wife. Like, what? What are the images? Right, right, right. And it just happens in a span of a few lines. But I feel like it's like this whole mental breakdown that they don't do justice at all. You need to explain what imagery up with the wife you're seeing, right? Yeah. I felt like it was really phoning it in for the last, like, 20 pages well, or so. Well, then it just becomes, like, a really basic oh. fight. Yeah, like, like so just many. Of, yeah, we have seen so many scripts where like the that's whole end is how, just. Ex that's just how every screenwriter seems to conclude something. Just have a shit ton of explosions. Yeah, and maybe some cool like fighting, and that's it. That's your yeah. climax. Well, and also there's there's some sex. He has sex with Maya. Yeah, that's, like that's okay. The very first night that they meet. I don't know. I guess it's okay. You, you haven't seen another like real human in a long time. Yeah, but it just says they make love. That was like the one line that they give it. That's fine. I don't know. I don't think that you was need weird to, to know what the particulars of their... Well, then don't say they make love. Just be like, they get into bed together, dot, 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 cut to the next scene. That doesn't matter. Does Something it? like that. I don't know. Just saying they like, make you want love. To... It's like, I don't like the terminology. Like, oh, I feel like that's just more a blanket. Maybe, that's just all a, right. a personal... Maybe, yeah, some personal baggage. I don't know. They're not really in love, are they? They barely even know each other. That's an expression. That describes the type of sex they're having, perhaps. Well, presumably you need to be in love to make love. No, I don't think so. Or do you have to make the love before you can be in it? No, I don't think so either. Okay. Apparently I don't get how love works. <laughs> I think it's an expression. Yeah. That isn't supposed to be taken literally. Well, see, I'm Barry. like Barry. Yeah, it's just, I only understand things literally. Right. Well, but Barry also said that he didn't want man to be reproducing with anyone. Right, because Barry fears for his own survival. Right. And if two normal humans were able to procreate... Two humans who are already resistant to the virus. Yeah, right. It's probably... Their kid probably will be too. So. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's how genetics work, as far as I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then... They could be, Barry could be played out in like a thousand years, basically. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be a way they can like coexist, right? I mean, if it's Barry's jam, if his whole thing is like he likes to just be efficient, just let all of his drones do the work and people can chill and do their thing and they don't have to kill each other. They can just coexist, right? I don't see why... why the... Barry keeps infiltrating people, everyone. Very infiltrated. Well, so everyone. he just stop doing that. Just like but have just your people Barry, and then leave us does. our people. You just have both. He came and stole the planet. I don't feel like these two groups are mutually exclusive. Right. I mean, I don't Which, think the screenplay really they could have ex too much about yeah. this. If they could have explained how that was the case, that would have been a oh. lot more tense. How like these two cannot exist alongside one another. Um. How did you feel about man being a very passive protagonist? He really doesn't do anything until the very end when he decides that he needs to go save Maya. He really just like wanders about, gets drunk a lot, yeah, and does and well, asks, and does what uh, Barry asks him to. I think that can that can work. I mean, I know I've said before it is. I do think it's really important that the main character should have like 
a goal that carries them through Act Two that they either he has no his goal is introduced in like the end of Act right, Two. Right, right. It is the just Act Three in which he has a goal. Um, but I do think it can work. It doesn't work here, to be clear. But I think it can work, and it sustains it at least for like the first maybe half of the second act. There's a good sense of mystery. Yeah, because it's kind of a clever conceit. I think. And and I think that was also because we still were getting flashbacks of him and his wife, and it seemed like he was still kind of reconciling with that. But those stop about halfway through the script. Mm-hmm. So then from there, it does feel pretty aimless. And that was a problem. I feel like something written like this needs to be really strong thematically. To kind of sustain it for its duration. Yeah. And I think they are... I feel like they're, they are going for something like military-related. Invasion-related. May, maybe. The last bad guy is a Marine. Like, why is he a Marine? Because he fights good. <laughs> I don't know. That's I, why he picked him. He could have been a, a fucking zombie. karate master. Yeah. Like, that, you know? I, they yeah. chose Marine, I feel like, for a reason. I don't know what it is because it seems pretty muddled to me. Yeah. And... In what should have happened... Ultimately, not sufficient, but... Should have had a crossover between this and Shadow Company, where Barry has all of his alien zombies, and then the Shadow Company... That from the Shane Black script, those guys come out of of the ground and start fighting the other zombies, and they're like Vietnam War veteran zombies, you know. Damn, that's a good point. <laughs> I feel like you don't mean that. No, I mean it'd be pretty funny. I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> and there's like zombies, and they're like the same thing. Extremely related, right? Yeah. No, I'm just trying to think more about the potential subtext that isn't really that may not be here. Yeah, might I, be think, a blind, I think but... you're grasping at straws. I think there's enough signs here for that f- to safely conclude that he was going for something. Well, it's one thing to say he was going for it; it's another to say. I'm not saying that he whether he achieved well, it. Yeah, I didn't say that. Okay. Um, I did kind of like how the action uh, scenes were written, though. How do you mean? Uh, just they felt, by and large, like really concise. They explained a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um. In a specific way, but they also related it. They also described it in a way that it made sense, like, scale-wise for the reader. Like, he would describe an explosion in pretty particular terms, and then he would say, it's the biggest one yet. Which is, it's, (laughs) it helps distinguish one from another, which I think is important. I guess, if you're going to have a bunch of explosions going on. But, I mean, apparently screenplays have to have a lot of explosions going on, because we've read, like, two dozen, like, half of the ones we've read have a lot of explosions. And, like, the, my problem with Shadow Company is that they were all just different ways to describe big explosions. Yeah. And they all just ultimately came across as the same explosion because we're not given a sense of... But I also kind of uh, assume, and maybe I've just been trained to think this way... Yeah, they're going to keep getting increasingly they, yeah, bigger. Yeah, they're always going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, and then it just ends. It ends very abruptly. Yeah. They, they bring in Barry just to, at the very end... Barry had kind of like left Daniel, or I'm sorry, he left Man to fight Daniel, and he just kind of pieced out because, again, we as we explain, like anything that Barry sees, Daniel can see. So Barry didn't want to be around in case he accidentally helped. Tipped them off. Yeah. So yeah. he just kind of comes back. He shows up again at the end after the fight is over, mm-hmm. and I don't think he even really says anything. He just kind of like waves or something. And yeah. the last line is, well, Maya says. To to man, I'd say you owe, or I'd say I'd say that Barry owes you big time, and man's like, no, I think we're about even. Yeah, that's the last line. It's like, no, you're not even. You that just took ate... over the planet. Now there's 27 humans left. Yeah, he totally screwed up your whole world. Still. Um. Also, why it begins and it says title card orbit zero 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 three rotation two one three. Oh, I completely forgot about that. That. It's like that, including that sort of title card in the beginning, doesn't that? You would think imply... they would carry that through the yeah, and you never screen. see it again. Yeah, why is that? Why does that matter? You get great specificity too in the the oh the very first uh, slug line says eight a.m. Yeah, yeah, and then we never get any times later either. Yeah, if you're gonna start something, you should finish it. You should carry through. You should carry through. Follow through. Um, um. Should we get into verdicts? I don't know if you have a lot more to say or not. Yeah, I guess we can do verdicts. Okay. You want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not 
a surprise to say I'm going to pass on both of these, the script and the writer. Yeah, I'm going to pass on the script. And I kind of want to give a very mild consider to the writer. Okay. On what, what grounds? Um, It's a good concept, or it's a solid concept. It's not very well executed, ultimately, but... I don't even think it's that good a concept. I mean, there have been plenty of other scripts like it that it's like Last yeah. Man on Earth sort of deal. That's true. But, <clears throat> I don't know, I really like the, the beginning, the introduction. Like, when we... The, dis- the reveal, or the discovery that... He's calling Barry, all these different people, Barry. Yeah. Um, the fact that he goes and like kills a bunch of people and nothing happens. Well, okay. Yeah, maybe you've hit the, on something the there. The introduction of the fla- or flashbacks are really effective in the beginning. Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, regarding the intro and, and some of the way they introduce the, the premise, the, like, the funnier stuff works for me. Mm-hmm. But I felt like, tonally, it wasn't consistent. If it had kept up the that kind of more light, humorous tone... Well, it's never really light, though. It's only light because it's ridiculous to us outside of I that world. I think very, that very opening was pretty light. Where he brings the axe to work and his boss hasn't seen him in a year. And he just lets it go. Cause... It's light because it subverts our expectations of such a scene. Yeah, so you have to know that the writer was writing it with that in mind and... and... But it isn't subversive. It isn't like in the world of the story. It isn't a light thing to do, right? It's just I suppose. Like a thing. I suppose. But you see what I mean. At least I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I see, just I like see what you The mean. stuff that was funny was good, and yeah. then it just stopped getting. It just stopped being funny. I don't know. Well, then, it, then it becomes more of like a romance action thing, and yeah, that doesn't work at all. Yeah, and the subtext definitely doesn't get there, as far as I guess either is either of us can tell yeah well the thing with his wife too i thought there was gonna be some kind of resolution to that or he was gonna well there's not really much resolution to anything yeah there's just resolution to the daniel stuff which is the worst stuff yeah i mean if all we need to do to sell script is set up a good premise why do we even write the second and third act i mean maybe what we should be doing is every screenwriter should just write a first act and pitch that why write a first act when you can write 10 pages (laughs) <laughs> yeah why write anything if you could just pitch it isn't that how it works well sometimes but well, i think you you, you have to have proven that you actually can write before you can get to that point um so yeah i think for those reasons i'm okay giving it a uh, mild okay mild consider for the writer because i feel like it's this is yeah i think you could do better next time i i want i don't want to give him a second chance i've okay. had enough Cool. Especially because he besmirched my name with a terrible character named Daniel. Yeah, not even Dan, but Daniel. Yeah. Much like you. Um, so, in that case. Oh, yeah, we gotta do Thanks all- everyone for voting on our poll for the... For what script we're gonna read. Yeah. I think we're still gonna give it one more week. One or two more weeks. We have, uh, it's kind of... It's a tie right it's now. Tie. That's why we it's can't. A, we can't yeah. do it now. I mean, we could make an executive decision, but... No. No, we need well, more we, votes. Well, we also can't... Tie. Yeah, we can't do that, because I think we both want a different one of the scripts. Right. So it's fine. It's... Yeah. So, yeah, we need we need at least one more vote. Um, hopefully more than that, but it's cool that the people that did vote... Or maybe not, because if one other person votes and then someone else comes by and wants to vote, if you see that you're going to cause a tie, we need an odd number of votes. Yeah, is what we're trying to say. Don't be, don't be lame. Like if you see that it's no, but well, then we're only going to get one more vote, and then no <laughs> I'm one's going to. I'm kidding. Vote. All right, all right. <clears throat> Gosh, um, just be cool. Info at ospodcast.com is our email. Our website is ospodcast.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com/ospodcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitter at OS Podcast. Mm-hmm. We're on Stitcher. We're pretty ubiquitous. We're pretty much everywhere, just like Barry. Yeah. So cool. Next time we are reading a script called Underage by Scott Newstatter and Michael Weber. A seventeen-year-old girl blackmails a twenty-something guy into being her boyfriend in order to exact revenge on her ex.